Hi guys, I'm Jelly Jelly Big Fanatic. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do my July wrap up. In this video, I'm going to talk about my two star and three star books for the month. Let's start with some statistics. I read a total of 12 books in July. I gave one of them two stars and I gave seven of them three stars. One of these books was written by a person of color. All eight of these books were written by female authors. All of these books were set in a country other than North America or England. All of these books had LGBTQ plus elements in them. Two books had people of color in them. Three of these books were historical fiction. Five of these books were contemporary. So let's first start with my one two star read for the month, which was The Blue Flower by Penelope Fitzgerald. This book is set in Germany and it is about a guy who falls in love with a 12 year old. This is a very old book and I was personally not a big fan of it. I started reading it because it kind of reminded me of Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. But I haven't read that one, but it has the same kind of premise. Like a guy, I think he was almost in his 30s, falls in love with a 12 year old girl. But I don't feel like it was written well. I honestly, I didn't see the appeal in a 12 year old girl. I didn't see why the main character fell in love with this girl. The writing was also very boring. There were a lot of characters and it was very hard to remember who was who and who was relevant and who wasn't. Having said that, this is historical fiction and it is based on real events. So the characters in this book have really existed and Penelope Fitzgerald has written their story. Then moving on to the three star books. My first three star book I want to talk about is Salmon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Alvitelli. This book has LGBTQ plus elements in it and people of colour and I rated it obviously three stars. Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda is about a guy called Simon who is talking via email to a guy named Blue and Simon realises he's fallen in love with Blue but he doesn't know who Blue is, only that Blue goes to his school. Both guys are not really out of the closet yet but obviously they've come out of the closet to each other but their families and their friends don't know about them yet. Only Blue doesn't really want to meet Simon, he doesn't want to reveal his identity. You've probably heard of this book because it was a very popular book on booktube and on blogs, everyone was, was hyped up about this and I was disappointed by it. I expected a lot more from it but I was especially very disappointed by the ending and especially by the reveal of who Blue was. I kind of expected it but I really didn't want him to be Blue but even he was so that kind of ruined my enjoyment of the book because I was really hoping it was somebody else because I really liked him but it wasn't so the whole purpose of the book was kind of defeated for me. My second three star book is Persuasion by Jane Austen. I really liked this actually and it, it, I didn't rate this three stars because I disliked it or because I thought it was a lesser work from Jane Austen because I have read Emma by Jane Austen as well but I just thought that Emma was for me, it was a better book than Persuasion was. Persuasion is very slow paced and not a lot happens in this. Not a lot happens in Jane Austen's works in general, but I thought Emma was much more interesting because the main character in this book is Anne Elliot and she fell in love with Captain Wentworth and who wasn't a captain back then and he didn't have a lot of money so Anne Elliot basically ended their flirtationship and moved on. A couple years later, Wentworth comes back and Anne is still in love with him and she doesn't know if Wentworth is still in love with her but she wants to try again and it's basically them giving love a second chance. Where Emma was about Emma, who is a very distinguished character. She's very outspoken and very outgoing and a lot more interesting I felt than the main character and Elliot in this book. Anne is, I felt like, was very soft-spoken and I felt like she was less outstanding than Emma was and that is why I rated it lower because I just liked Emma as a character more. I still definitely enjoyed this story. Jane Austen's works are incredible. I'm currently reading Pride and Prejudice and I am liking that so much especially because I'm watching the Lizzie Bennet Diaries on YouTube as well and it is very enjoyable but this is definitely a great piece of literature and don't get discouraged by my rating it three stars. It's also very, very short. It's only 200 somewhat pages. But if you haven't read anything by Jane Austen, this is 
a great piece of literature, you should read it. The third book I'm going to be talking about is Summer Lost by Ali Condi. This book has people of colour in it. Um, this is a middle grade story. I rate this on the young adult because I don't really have a separate section for middle grade because I normally don't read middle grade. But I read the Match Trilogy by Ellie Condy and since then Ellie Condy has been an author I looked fond upon and I wanted to read something else by her since then. And so I picked up her new release, Summer Lost, which is about a girl called Seda who comes to this town for the summer. Her father and her little brother have died in a car accident. And there she meets a boy called Leo and they start working together at this kind of theatre type thing in their in this town where she is for the summer and it's about the friendship they form and about Seda and her family coming to terms with her family's death. The premise is obviously very serious, it deals with very serious themes and I thought Ellie Conley did that well but just the writing style was so juvenile. It had very short sentences, easy words and I really don't like that. I like my longer sentences, not those chopped up short sentences, uh, but I have to say, even though I rated it three stars, the ending did move me. I honestly cried at the ending and there were, there was especially a sentence at the end of the book where Leo says to Seda, you are my person, where I just, I just bought basically. I was like, that is such a beautiful thing to say, especially for such a young person. The fourth book I'm going to be talking about is Pushing Perfect by Michelle Farkov, who's a person of colour. Pushing Perfect has LGBTQ plus elements in it with a side character. And this is Michelle Farkov's new release. I read Playlist for the Dead, which was another book by her. And I rated that one three stars also, but I was to give her another chance. So I read her new release, Pushing Perfect, which I bought as an e-arc. And... It was average. I don't know if I'll ever read anything else by her again, but it had an interesting promise. It's about a girl who gets photographed. She gets a drug from a dealer. She gets blackmailed by this person to do everything this person instructs her to do. Otherwise, this person will leak these photos to her family who are, who are pressuring her to do well in school. And she got these drugs because she got panic attacks during exams and she had to do well on her SATs. And she couldn't if she didn't take this drug. So she gets involved in this world that she doesn't really know how to deal with and all of her friends get blackmailed as well and it's them trying to figure out how to deal with this and what exactly is going on and who is blackmailing them. I thought it was interesting but I wasn't really counting on a mystery. It did surprise me who the blackmailer turned out to be so that was a point up for this book. I thought it was a pretty strange though. It was a pretty strange person and I was like I don't know if I fully believe his or her motive to do this. I wasn't fully convinced of it, but it was a good choice because I, I just didn't expect it. The fifth book is The Ballroom by Anna Hope. This is historical fiction and it's about a woman and a man in an asylum who meet each other and fall in love with each other. And they meet each other each Friday in the, the ballroom. This asylum has a ballroom in the middle of it. This is a real existing asylum. They only meet each other on Fridays and they fall in love each with each other while they dance. And it's also there's also a third main character and he is a doctor in this facility. And he gets obsessed with the idea of sterilizing asylum patients so, so they won't be able to get children. And they won't be able to get their bad genes and become crazy as well. Which is obviously very stupid because some of these people were actually mentally ill but some of them were only in there because of social rules. I thought this was very interesting because it was based on real historical events. In the 1900s, 1800s there was really talk about sterilizing these patients and I thought it was very interesting to learn about but I also felt it was kind of weird because the third main character, the doctor in this facility, was at first obsessed with trying to convince everyone that this didn't need to happen. Patients didn't need to be sterilized, they just have to be in this facility and have to be separated from each other so they can't get children. And then he suddenly turned around completely and was totally obsessed with the idea of they do need to be sterilized. The sixth book I'm going to be talking about is Sea of Dreams by Catherine Levesque. This is a very random book for me because I'm in a challenge on Goodreads. And I had to pick a random book I normally wouldn't read. And this is actually the first, the fourteenth book in the American Hero series. It is an adult romance series, and I normally don't read adult romance, but I thought, why well, not give it a shot? It's about a woman and a man who meet each other. This woman has three children, and one of her children is in the water. They are by by the sea, and one of her children is in the water, and she is drowning. And then this. 
these military men come and save her child and bring her child back to her and among these men is a Beck who is the male main character and he is immediately taken aback by Blake's beauty and they start talking and they fall in love with each other. It was very much insta-love and because Beck hadn't been looking at women for years and he sees Blake and he was immediately in love with her and I just didn't get their romance. I thought it was very much insta-love even though the sex scene in this book, I think there was one. I thought that was really hot, not gonna lie. The author knows how to write her sex scenes but Apart from that, I didn't think this was anything special. Any last book I'm going to be talking about in this video is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. I read Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson before and I thought I want to read all of her books now. So I started with one of the more hyped up ones and that was Amy and Roger's Epic Detour and I was disappointed, not gonna lie. Use of playlists, so many playlists, I can't deal with that. I don't like playlists in books and that was what, this, what really annoyed me because there were a lot of them get stressed out by them. Apart from that, I didn't get the chemistry between the two main characters. They certainly went on this detour together, even though Amy knew this would upset her mother. Her mother had set out this entire road trip for her, for them and they just completely went off the road, took a detour. They didn't even know each other and I didn't get the chemistry they felt for each other. I liked Amy with another character in this book they encounter but it didn't work out and I'm I was just very disappointed. I always ship the main characters with the wrong people but I I didn't see the chemistry and that was, this book is basically a romance and obviously there are other aspects to it but I if the romance doesn't work out for me it in a romance book it's basically it's not a good book for me. <laughs> These are my 8, 2 and 3 star books. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books. If you want to read any of these books. Let me know what you read in, in July. And I will see you for my 4 star and 5 star reads. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.